if you really want to raise revenues, and particularly from the government standpoint, enough revenues to pay for a public safety network, a really hardened public safety network, then you not only have to have a structure that incentivizes people to come in and buy and pay up for the spectrum, but you also have to have a structure that incentivizes people that own the spectrum to bring it to market. The FCC is playing an interesting role here. Of, of ma they're kind of like a broker. They're matching the sellers of the spectrum, the TV broadcasters, and the buyers of the spectrum, which will tend to be the wireless carriers. And so to the extent that the auction is structured in a way that a, a really large number of TV broadcasters don't bring their supply of spectrum to market, then companies like AT&T or Sprint, T-Mobile, are going to look and say, the senator made this point, look, for this to be useful to us, we need kind of a broad footprint with a certain amount of depth because that, you scale the technology that way. The service quality is really important that it be broad and deep spectrum. And so if you don't get enough broadcasters coming into the marketplace, putting their spectrum in there where, where companies can acquire these really broad footprints of spectrum, then the auction will fail in and of itself. So getting the auction structure right is critical to make sure you have people with supply and people with demand coming to meet and, and bringing the revenues to the table. I do think that it all depends on how the FCC designs the auction. Um, I think that they want to see it be a success and I think they have a lot of motivation to make it a success. Uh, I think they have to weigh lots and lots of different factors. You know, one of the things that I think it's just true about this, uh, and, and this is one of the question marks that no one knows the answer to, and that's why there's anxiety about it, is if you really look around the country, we talk about this spectrum crunch, if you really look around the country, there's not a spectrum crunch in most areas. I mean, I would, I don't know, randomly. Today. Yeah, today. And I, I would say that, yeah, I don't know, you tell me, 35 states really don't have a spectrum crunch. If, if there's a problem with access to wireless communications out in where I live, it, it's probably more just infrastructure build out and the economics of providing it because it can be very expensive in rural America. But, but there's definitely a spectrum crunch in some areas of the country and there will be more and more so around the country. So, you know, one of the questions is where you need the spectrum the most, the most critical need is in the urban areas, right? Uh, I'm guessing those broadcasters that, that's a very valuable asset for them, and they, they may be the least reluctant to give up their spectrum. So, you know, how the FCC tries to design this and structure it to put in place all the right incentives and get all the policies right, um, we just don't know the answer to that yet. But like I said, I'm going to be hopefully heavily involved in this all the way around, not just talking to stakeholders, but talking to the FCC and, and listening to people all around the country to try to make sure they get it right.